Hello and welcome to this very quick video all about INAV arming. Now this is probably one of the most common questions that I get. Now if you're new to INAV uh, then go and check out the rest of my INAV for Beginners 2020 series that this video is part of. Uh, but you may have been directed here because this is such a common question. It's going to be great to have a video just to go check that one out. It kind of covers it. Now if you've set it up as per the videos that I've just referred to, you should be good to go straight out of the box. But a common question that I get is why can't I get my motor to turn, uh, all, the, all the controls work, or why can't I arm my model? And that's the same whether or not you're talking about something like this, a flying wing, or a quadcopter with a little GPS on, so you can do all that fab INAV stuff. Now there are a number of key basics here that will stop INAV from arming. So let me run through those very quickly and then we'll jump on the computer. I'll show it you in the configurator. First of all is that you have to have the outputs enabled. INAV as one of the last steps of configuration, you would enable the outputs and then that then starts sending the control signals to the ESCs or the servos in something like a wing. Other systems like beta flight, if you're coming from that side, don't have that step, so it's often overlooked. So absolutely make sure that that is turned on, because if it isn't, nothing on the model is going to move. It's harder to do on planes, because on a fixed wing model, you need the outputs turned on to set all your servo movements, but it's possible to overlook it if it's a quad. Don't forget you have to arm the system as well. You have to flick the arming switch. Again, refer to those other two setup videos, set up arming as a mode, uh, before the motors will start to run. Exactly the same on a fixed wing. But it can be a little bit more confusing because on a fixed wing, all the other control surfaces are probably going to be moving fine as you move the sticks. So it looks like it's okay, right? But the motor won't turn and be active. The throttle won't work until it's completely happy and it's all armed. A couple of other top tips I will give you is when you plug the power in with any flight controller, I've seen this quite a few times, uh, don't move it around, just plug it in and just leave it sat there for a moment to soak. Uh, there's a certain amount of initialization of gyros and accelerometers and things that happen on the flight controller and if you let that all happen while it's sat nice and still, you'll get a much better flight and you uh, might avoid some of the slightly odd errors that you can sometimes get in INAV and other systems actually when things haven't calibrated up cleanly. Final top tip is make sure that you have the system messages in your on-screen display if you're going to be flying FPV. That's probably one of the best ways to find out if you can't get INAV to work what the problem is. INAV will actually tell you in text, plain English, on the on-screen display. Fortunately, if you're running something like the DJI system, you don't have access to that, but I'll show you another way to uh, get INAV to tell you what the problem with, with arming. So let me jump onto the computer. Let me show you the two or three most common things that I see when pilots can't arm an INAV system, and I'll also show you, if you can't arm, how you can find out what the cause is so you can fix it. So here we are on the computer, I've just plugged in that ZOHD dart that we were looking at in the introduction. So let me just click on connect and here we can see everything all moving. Now, first of all, uh, we need to make sure that the outputs are enabled. Let me just show you that again. So in the outputs tab, you need to make sure that this thing here, enable motor and servo outputs is turned on. If it isn't, then INAV can't talk to anything else. It also might be that your ESC protocol might need to be changed as well if it's for a multi-rotor, or maybe you're using a multi-rotor ESC in a plane. It should be able to talk standard PWM, but you might have to try one of the others. Other top tip for servo refresh rate, if you have analog servos on your model, it's a fixed wing, go for 50 hertz. If it's digital, then you can run it a little higher. I tend to run digital servos at about 100 hertz. Now, I've got my motor stop on low throttle turned on because this just happens to be a wing, but you can set that up how you want. The other issue, of course, is that you do need your mode set up. So let's go and do that. So here's modes, and there is an arming channel with a range. Now, I don't have my receiver turned on at the moment, so I'm in fail-safe mode, uh, which is fine. But you need to make sure that you have an arming switch set up on your radio and that you have a range set so you can flick arming. The last big one, which 
is a very common problem that I see is see all this stuff here on the right hand side has pre-arming checks now when you do the setup the last part of the setup I'd always recommend doing it with the battery plugged in and the model plugged into the computer to do your last final setups here now that does mean that you could inadvertently start the props so I would always do that with a prop off but you can see here that they are two red crosses all of this should be green on the computer if it isn't then you will not be able to arm everything has to pass the pre-arm checks now navigation is not safe at the moment because the GPS isn't powered isn't getting a GPS signal and even if it was powered until it has a solid 3d GPS lock it will consider navigation unsafe and that's then probably the most common thing that I see with iNav is people trying to arm it before it's got a 3d lock you need to sit on the grass for a couple of minutes just to get a good 3D lock and for the H-Dop to drop below the level that iNav is happy with. You can also hit, see here that it's not happy with hardware health. And yeah, that's probably about right. Because at the moment, the GPS is unreadable. So let's take an example where you were trying to arm your iNav powered multi-rotor or fixed wing and you couldn't get it to arm. First thing I would do is if you have... Uh, FPV system on it is make sure that in the on-screen display that you do have system messages configured because the system message is going to be the part where iNav will tell you exactly where the problem is and it might be waiting for GPS fix it might be H.2 high or in, in a recent issue that I had it might be telling me that one of the settings in iNav has become corrupted and it won't arm. iNav is really, really good at making sure that it will only arm if the system is safe to do so. Now you can turn those safeties off, but I wouldn't recommend it. There's a reason that they're there and they'll save you bacon if you try and do something daft. So my tips would be if you can't arm, first of all, go and plug the model while it's powered by the battery back into configurator with the prop off make sure that you can see all these are green if you can't then it'll show you which one of these you need to go through if you've already gone through my iNav for beginners 2020 build series then all of these should be green at the end of that process anyway and then if you go and flick your arming switch and it doesn't arm my big tip would be pop your goggles on and see what the system message says that's probably going to tell you exactly where the problem is in my experience the vast majority of problems is all based on the fact that the GPS has not got a 3D lock. Obviously, if you haven't configured a GPS and set up GPS flight modes on iNav, then you won't see that. But if you've set up a GPS, which let's face it is kind of the point, then you will not be able to arm until that 3D lock is there. So there you have it, that's how you troubleshoot arming and get it all to work. I would also heartily recommend if you're into iNav, spend a bit of time reading the wiki or the documentation. I'll put a link down below all about arming. It's very worthwhile just spending 10 minutes just reading through all of that and uh, you'll know everything you need to know to make sure that you'll never fall foul of iNav not arming again. Thank you for watching my video and watching right to the very end. If you want to find out what I'm currently working on, you can follow me on social media by searching for Painless360 in the usual places. If you'd like to become part of the inner circle, then you can become a Patreon. Details are in the description and you get lots of additional benefits. Check out the playlist section on the channel too. I organize all of my videos into playlists and it's called something like Introduction to or for Beginners. All of the content is aimed so that you can start at the very beginning and it teaches you that subject, starting with simple principles and moving up to teach you everything you need to know.